Hey, it's Mark A Squared. So someone posted asking about seeing me pick. So I, I used, I think this is the one I want. Yep. Um, these are Sparrow's practice locks with the cutaway so you could actually see the pin. Right? I this is the lock that I used to get my white belt on from, for Reddit. Um, they come with these knob style keys. What I'm going to do is uh, I picked this one uh, for camera before. So I'm, I'm done with this one for now, but here's what was gonna do, what I'm gonna do today. The other two, we had asked to see the other two. Well, we have a serrated, we have a, and if I can get it to focus, we have serrated pins with the horizontal lines across the uh, pins there. You could see those, yeah. Um, and the other one is spool pins. I'm gonna leave the spool pins lock alone for today. Just, I'm just gonna leave it alone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, hopefully, <laughs> swiftly, pick the serrated pin lock, and then I'm gonna take this one apart. Because what I wanna do is, is re-key it for a normal key with a normal hasp on it with six pins. Because while there are only five pins here currently and in that key, is five pins. It's an SC1 uh, Schlage 1 keyway. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a sixth pin chamber in here. It's currently empty. But one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like, you know, sitting right here, give or take. It, it, and I'll, I'll reveal that and show that. But I uh, the, the re-keying, the redoing of it, it will be later. Because what I want to do is take this body and uh let's see is it this one yeah i just started to do it on this one already where you could start to see they're much more reflective i don't care for the aged patina whatever when i can keep it nice and uh, so i'm gonna uh sand it down and, and make it nice and smooth glass paper and all and then brasso it so that it's nice and shiny and i'll i may do some filming during that process too but the, the main point here is that I'm going to disassemble it for camera and then uh, reassemble it again after I have it all shiny and pretty. But for now, let's see, I'm going to use top of the keyway tensioning. I'm going to try and hold this so that we could look down the, uh, the, the cutout here and see what all the different uh, pins do in action, right? So I'm going to use a uh, shallow hook here, Sparrow's shallow hook. Uh, these are all from the locks and the picks are in the tuxedo set. Um, let me get that in focus. Let's see. I'm going to actually just blatantly use the window to, to, to see and watch as I, as I bump different pins. I can see them moving. Okay, so there I'm on pin five, right? Uh, I can see they're just bumped up. I've got one, two, three, four, and five, and... Let me get a little bit more tension on there because it's slipping a little bit. Well, let's see. So if I tap on that first pin, uh, that's the second pin. If I tap on the first pin and I, I feel a little spring there, it's good. Net pin two is going to be this pin three. That's gonna, as soon as I push it, I think as soon as I get that aligned properly, this should roll over. Eh, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, let's see. We'll go two, one. Come on, pin. Yeah, it is the third pin there. I'm losing my tension. I'm losing my focus here. I probably should put this in a vise, but that's the way this shit's going to go. Let's see here. I can feel it, but I'm, I'm like... Relax the tension a little bit here. Let's see. I don't see anything pushed up too high. Oh, I felt it. That's that one. Yeah, okay, it's, it's started. I think it's got to be this. It's that third pin that is not uh, right here. It's binding, um, but I can't seem to get my pick onto it. Like, I don't, it's, it's such a shallow key pin. I can't really feel it. Let's see here. Here's that fourth pin. There we go. Okay, so I got it. It's open. 
Um, you can see all the pins are straight across. Well, basically, I moved them up until everything lined up at the shear line and then turned it. Um, okay, so let me zoom out here. If I can zoom out. Yeah, I think I need to leave it where it's at because we're at 1x. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of the space I have around me. Let's see. So my picks in their little, pretty little case. So in so the, the tuxedo set comes with the locks and the picks. Not this case, but a different case. Um, I just like to be fancy with leather and all that. Um, I also got from, I think it's uh, learnlockpicking.com, their seven pin adversary, which came with a million pin kit. Uh, well, actually, something like 200 or so. Um, and I also ordered the refill. So my goal in that was to turn this pill case into a repinning kit. So I've uh, essentially, we have everything from standard pins, spools. Let's see if I can get it to focus. This is the buttload of spool pins. Um, the serrated ones, like I just picked on that present lock that, I, that I'm going to be taking apart here in a moment. Serrated pins, shroom pins, mushroom pins, which I have a few of because those, those came with uh, one of the uh, Sparrows kits. I don't remember. but uh, And then the uh, adversary version is these T-pins, which look pretty wicked. I'm going to put a couple of those into the, the lock that I'll be cleaning up and doing there. But I mean, springs key pins so i have to like pull out and identify what key pins i'll put, be putting in and everything just a load of fun stuff um, i'm not going to be using anything out of here today other than like the tweezers and uh the pinning mats i'm gonna get this all arranged here in a minute um and the follower let's see i don't need yeah just the follower um see i have a whole bunch of different keys back here click I have a whole bunch of different keys back here that I could rekey them to. But I also have, <laughs> I ordered uh, five sets of four or four sets of five. I think it's five sets of four different key configurations. So that's, that's a little, little teaser of what I'll be doing later when I repin it, right? Uh, I'll do all that on camera as well. But I can put this aside because I can get all this out of the way. I don't need it for right now. What I need is this space right here. This like so. Okay, so this lock is still turned. Doink. Right. I'll set that right here for now. Here's the key that was in there. Let's get a look at that actually. Let's focus you bad dog. There we go. Yeah, that first pin is really low and you have to reach up underneath it. So that was a, why there was a little bit of a challenge. A couple of different tweezers here. Um, that are going to facilitate this process for me. Um, going to try not to spill anything out and be nuts with it. But I mean, we can look down and see what's what in, 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 as we do. There we go. Um, as we take it apart so that we can, you know, watch in the window if, uh, as an occasion. So everything's held together by this retaining screw and the little pin in there. Okay. I take my follower here and it has a special end on it that is meant to push in that pin and uh, lefty loosey over here, Mark. Uh, I'm gonna put the key in just so that everything will be nice and uh, at the shear line there. Um, trying to do this in frame as well. So there we go. I just unscrew it like so. All right, and there's the uh, cap. There is a little pin holding that in. That's what this, this is meant to, to depress. There's a little screw in there as well. So you can see I'm going to have uh, focusing issues tonight. Okay, so that's the back of the lock with the, the retainer taken off. Um, I'm going to take this, and what I do is I just push the core out push the core out and use the body of this plastic thing to keep all those pins in there. Okay. And you can just, so long as you're careful with it, I want to make sure I don't spill all my guts, my pins there too. So I turn that upside down. There we go. Okay. So, uh, I'll set that right there for now. And the pins will kind of hold that into place, right? So here is 
I'll turn that around so it matches the orientation I was picking it at. All the key pins that match this built-in key, all right? So and look how little that one actually moves at the end there. All right, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these, I'm gonna dump them out one by one. Dink, dink, three, and I just keep my finger over the holes until I'm at the, the, the next pin. And as I said, there is a sixth, click. As I said, there is a sixth hole there. So I'm gonna repin it with six keys. But what I'm noticing also is um, the guys on the forum, people on the forum mentioned this chamfer. Uh, let me see if I can get it to focus at this depth here. Can I zoom in like this? Yeah, there we go. So the holes are not actually flush. They are slightly cupped in, chamfered, is what the, uh, the folks were calling this. Supposedly, that makes them easier to pick. If that's the case, well, that's the case. It, they're, they're training locks, right? What are you going to do about it? Um, let me see here. So I have, this is the first pin, the second pin, the third pin, the fourth pin, the fifth pin. I could set this down over here for now. Right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to move them into the pinning tray. So there's two different sides to these as well. Oh, I can drop it everywhere. It, um, for these key pins, you know what? I'm going to put them in the tray first and then I'll, I'll talk about it. The key pins actually have an orientation. The part that touches the key is peaked. It is dimple as opposed to being flat. So when you put them back in to here, you have to put them with the right side up just so that the key functions smoothly in the lock. Um, that's what this tray's meant to do is to, to help me just keep my orientation of everything while I take things apart, right? And that looks good, I think. Um, I'm gonna push these up just to simulate. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take the pins out of the lock carefully, very carefully, um, and put them in the correct order here, and then the screws go above that. And, and some locks, I don't have any here with me right now, have little uh, retainer clips that go across the top as well, a uh, different alternate to taking the core out is to remove the screws and just take the pins out. Um, those would go in these top holes here. There's like enough little, this a space for everything and everything in its space, right? Um, now this might be a little hard to actually see because lighting is, not the greatest in my current orientation, but I'm gonna try and do this in a way that will let you see what I'm doing here. Let's see, so I've got pins, all right? I'm going to aim this up and down so that as I progress this backwards, and I realize it's out of focus, but let me pop one pin first here. See, the, as I move this thing backwards, that first pin just sort of pops up. Right? And it's right and it's contained in that little channel there so that I can just pick it right out and put it down. And that's associated with the first pin. So I put it in there with the first pin. Um, I can then back this out a little more. If I want to be more careful, I could use my tweezers see, so that things don't fly away. All right. Um, kind of grab that and I'll put that one in the tray. And these are coming out with the serrations facing up. I might have. I just noticed that might have been off camera there. Oh, well. Um, the serrations are facing up as they come out of the uh, key chamber there. And that's what that's called. The uh, pin stack, I should say. Uh, these are the pin stack. What am I talking about? I don't know. Let's see. Okay. I'm trying to tap on the lock to focus on it like an idiot. Yeah, I could just be careful with how I do this. I've seen other people where they aim it down at the surface of a table and just pop each pin in, in sequence, but I like to be able to see what, what's popping out here as I pop things out. I think that might be it. Okay, that is all my pins because the last one didn't have any, right? Um, I'll set this thing aside because I don't need it right now. There are still springs in there. All right, uh, let me get my mess cleaned up here. And I will bring this up to the camera to show a better uh, better shot of it towards the end here. Now let's see, okay, that's good. Now the springs I don't need to be so careful with because they're not gonna go anywhere, right? I mean, they may go 
get, may go crazy, but probably not. So that's it. I've, I've cleaned out this lock. Let me take these screws and orient them as so. And here, and I'm really hoping my cat doesn't come up here and disturb this situation right now. Let's see, we've got that. We've got that. There's no reason to even have a key in there anymore because it's, I mean, that's what it is. You know, it's a big hunk of brass that, if I can get it to focus, big hunk of brass that's been milled and carved and channeled in just the right way to fit in here, right? So then I'll take the lock and I'm going to, uh, next time you see it on camera, it's going to be much more shiny, much more polished up. I will um, lubricate the bits that should be lubricated and polish up the bits that should be polished up. That window, backside of the window in here is really hard to get uh, clean at all. This is the best I was able to do on the previous iteration lock. You can see my ref well, reflection of the camera there, but... Uh, I'm gonna try and take this one to a higher level of polish, like you know, mirror image, hold it up here and see my face in the in the lock logo. We'll see. In any case, that is taking apart one of these Sparrows practice locks. Oh, let me show you the pins while we're here, right? So, uh, of course they slide downwards. Of course they slide downwards. Um, but you can see how the they are pointier at this end. <laughs> I'm trying not to t tip the whole tray over while I do this. Um, that's where the key would go. Uh, they're in the wrong orientation. If they're in, in orientation with the uh, driver pins back there, should be like this, right? So I was, I don't know what the hell I was thinking there, putting them in the other orientation. The key needs to raise these, so the pointies need to be on the bottom, right? Now, I'm going to use my collection that I just showed there of all the various pins that I have to find matches for those other keys that I have. I'm not going to reuse these. Um, and I'm going to, as far as the driver pins, they're all currently uh, serrated. I'm going to mix it up with the different ones that I have there in a the kit. I also have an assortment of different strength screw, uh, screws, uh, springs is what I'm trying to say there, that I'm going to replace these maybe with. Um, I'm also going to put in a, a sixth pin to make it a sixth pin. That last one you just won't be able to see. It's going to be a little bit of a mystery. Um, yep, there we go. So that's that for now. And that's Mark A squared. And y'all have a good one.